Hey, remember Beetlejuice? Well, if you don't, um, I'm sure it remembers you. Anyway, but remember that time, a few years ago, when it started to dim suddenly for unexplained reasons, and some scientists thought that it might actually go supernova. Well, it didn't go supernova yet, but interestingly, we now have some other exciting updates about a very intriguing star that you see right here. A star that also kind of looks like Betelgeuse, but is not Betelgeuse, yet it seems to have experienced an extremely similar event at the end of 2022. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to be discussing the mystery of these dimming stars, what the scientists discovered by studying these stars in the last few years, and essentially resolve the mystery of Betelgeuse and a lot of similar stars once and for all, because the observations from this star known as RW Cephei have now revealed a definitive cause for what's producing these dimming effects that sometimes make these stars dim by up to 75% or even more. But let's start with some important details and a bit of a review. So this is sort of what Betelgeuse looked like and how it changed between January of 2019 and March of 2020. This star, located in the Orion Nebula, despite being a variable star with a very specific period that does make it change brightness once in a while, this time changed so much that it became much dimmer than any time before in recorded history. And as a result, this particular event is now known as the Great Dimming. Not particularly original, but that's what it basically was. And naturally, as a result of these unusual observations, and because this is a red giant star, pretty much at the end of its life cycle, some studies propose that maybe it's about to go supernova. As a matter of fact, one of the recent studies that you can learn more about in the video in the description below provided some additional evidence that the star might go supernova a little bit quicker than we thought. Not like tomorrow or after tomorrow, a few thousand years. And because of the mysteries of Betelgeuse, for the past few years, a lot of scientists started to dig through a lot of different data, including different telescopes, and were actually able to discover a lot of different observations, including observations in various frequencies, that allowed scientists to see different layers inside Betelgeuse, and in essence, uncover how these different layers changed during the dimming event, eventually revealing the most likely culprit. And one of the first discoveries here was the definitive evidence for two very powerful shock waves inside the photosphere of this star that basically released a huge amount of material from the star, causing a lot of other layers to change as well, eventually resulting in a much more powerful shock wave that suddenly released a huge amount of material, resulting in a large dust cloud that then blocked the view from planet Earth, making the star dim for several months. And this was observed as different changes inside different layers that actually did happen at different times. And intriguingly, it wasn't until sometime in 2022 that Betelgeuse finally settled down and sort of went back to being normal, meaning that this lasted for nearly three years. But what's even more intriguing, or somewhat coincidental, is that around the same time, an extremely similar event started to happen around a different red giant, RW Cephei. This one is actually much farther away, it's approximately 11,000 to possibly even 16,000 light years away from planet Earth, but it's extremely similar to Betelgeuse in terms of the actual age, although much much larger and much more massive in size. It's possibly up to twice as large as Betelgeuse, and if you were to place this in a solar system, its edges would reach all the way to the orbit of Jupiter. So basically this is something that's about 1500 to 1600 times the size of our Sun. Intriguingly, this is actually technically beyond the so-called limit of how big we think stars can get. Which by itself is already a bit of a mystery. How exactly can these stars get so big? This is also potentially one of the largest known stars in the entire galaxy, but because of the uncertainty with the distance, and even what type of a star this is, we don't really know its exact size. Nevertheless, in December of 2022, this star also started to experience its own great dimming. This star faded by about one third of its normal brightness, and as you can see from the image here, it even changed in shape. And just like with Betelgeuse, a lot of scientists tuned in and wanted to find out what's going on. And it looks like we now have a lot of information about these events, which also seem to apply to Betelgeuse as well. And so what exactly is happening here? Well, looks like exactly the same thing as Betelgeuse. Here, an enhanced mass loss led to the formation of a large dust cloud, which seems to have created a much darker region in front of the star as viewed from planet Earth. And this was directly confirmed by looking at this using several telescopes and discovering a relatively large dark patch on the surface of the star 
which seems to be a result of surface mass ejection. As a matter of fact, if you compare this image to the one from Beetlejuice, specifically the one in December of 2019, they do look surprisingly similar. And more importantly, additional observations from amateur astronomers revealed certain lines from hydrogen and potassium that seem to be blue shifted by about 40 km per second relative to the star. And that of course implies that something is moving toward us at this velocity. So all of this material is expanding from the star and is moving really fast away from its surface. And because a lot of this material is relatively cold and relatively dark, it's basically blocking the view of the star. And it's most likely going to do this for several months, just like with Betelgeuse, possibly a little bit longer. This is a much larger star after all. But despite this explanation being somewhat similar to Betelgeuse, there are some additional, very intriguing discoveries. First of all, unlike Betelgeuse, RW Cephi seems to have done this previously. As a matter of fact, even some of the recent observations provide us with a lot of changes in brightness that are way more extreme than Betelgeuse. As a matter of fact, back in 1948 and 1951, there was an extremely similar dimming event that was followed by an extremely fast rebrightening within just a few months, extremely similar to what we're observing right now as well. And because the star is larger and is also losing a lot of mass, even compared to Betelgeuse, and also because this particular star seems to have recently left its red supergiant phase and is currently evolving into a new hotter phase, all of this mass loss is part of its phase transition with these great dimming events just being very massive mass ejection events that seem to be part of the evolution of the star from the red giant into its next stage known as helium burning phase. At this point, the star is expected to become a little bit less luminous and possibly even a little bit colder and might also shrink a little bit until it runs out of helium as well. With a lot more evidence coming from the observations using the telescope known as Chara, which uncovered that the star doesn't even appear to be round and is going through some evolutionary processes. And so the very hectic motion of these outer layers seems to create a lot of chaotic activity on the surface and various disorganized patches. And since in this case the observations were done both in visible and the infrared light, which actually showed us that the fading was much much larger in the visible colors and not in the infrared colors, this definitely confirms that all of this was the result of a large dust cloud. But as the cloud moves away and expands away from the star, all of this will go back to normal and will probably stay this way for at least a few years. Because this seems to be just one of many grand eruptions that the star is going through and they all seem to play a really important role in that final transition stage for a lot of these red giants. So this star seems to be doing a lot more of these but Betelgeuse might have just started, naturally suggesting that this star is going to go supernova much sooner. And intriguingly, something super similar was also seen around the famous VY Canis Majoris, the star that used to be considered the largest in the galaxy. It no longer is, but it's a star in a similar stage, a red giant phase in the middle of transition. And so in a separate study that you can also find in the description, scientists revealed that this is exactly what VY Canis Majoris went through as well basically implying that this is an extremely common event for these types of stars. But just like Betelgeuse, VY Canis Majoris is most likely not as advanced as RW Cephi. And so this star seems to be the prototype for what's going to be happening to Betelgeuse and Canis Majoris, possibly in the next few hundreds of years. These stars seem to be changing pretty quickly and within the next few centuries, RW Cephi will most likely look completely different and possibly even become extremely difficult to see because it's no longer going to be a red giant. And so in the end, because of the observations from the star, we now know that none of this is unusual, none of this is most likely the signs of imminent supernova, and all of this seems to be pretty normal for red giants. As a matter of fact, these observations might even help us resolve another mystery, the mystery of unusual disappearing stars that have been detected in the last 70 or so years by one of the studies you can find in the description. Maybe those disappearing stars were basically these red giants that sort of went through a dramatic shift and kind of became invisible. And maybe all of this happens really quickly. These types of stars are definitely helpful in order to understand what happens to these red giant stars and one day will provide us with an answer of when exactly Betelgeuse is going to go supernova and what effect is going to produce on planet Earth. Right now we don't think it's going to actually do much, but I guess you never know just yet. Anyway, on that note, once there are more discoveries or additional updates, we're going to talk more about this in some of the future videos. 
Until then, check out some of the previous videos on similar topics, including Beetlejuice, in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.